Did you know that not all dinosaurs went extinct, and that the T-Rex may have actually been covered in feathers? I'm Bob from World 5 List. Join me as I cover seven of the most common myths about dinosaurs. Number 7. The T-Rex had wimpy arms. The disproportionately small arms of the T-Rex have been the target of a lot of jokes in recent years, even on Toy Story. Or perhaps you've come across the meme of a T-Rex trying to clap its hands, or wipe its behind, or even put on a hat. Either way, you get the idea, it just can't reach because its arms are so tiny. But how real is this commonly held assessment of the enormous dinosaur's uncharacteristically short limbs? Well, according to paleontologist Kenneth LaCovera, what the T-Rex lacks in arm strength, it makes up for in a lot of ways. So he's not really denying it. Its arms were small, but that doesn't mean that they were weak. In an interview with National Geographic, he, who seems to take a mockery toward the T-Rex rather personally, explained a theory that was developed by his colleague, Michael Habib. Habib's theory holds that a strong bite requires a large jaw, and that a big head is necessary for the muscles to attach properly. So naturally, big neck muscles would be imperative for supporting a large head. What the theory boils down to is that essentially the T-Rex had small arms because its strength and ferocity was needed somewhere else, such as its jaw and neck, and that the king of all dinosaurs was afforded physical advantages due to its seemingly unusual body proportions. So they may have been small arms, but they were anything but wimpy. And now that we're all warmed up, what are some common myths about dinosaurs that you know about? Let me know all about it in the comments below, and if you're new here, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on my latest videos. Number 6. All Dinosaurs Had Scales Wrong, but don't feel bad if you're guilty of this erroneous thinking. Until the 1970s, most scientists actually believed that scales were a standard physical characteristic of dinosaurs, just like lizards and snakes of today. Around that time, paleontologists began to speculate that some dinosaurs actually had feathers. The first experts to question this would take some flack for it, of course, from their contemporaries, who perceived the idea that not all dinosaurs had scales was a bit far-fetched and ridiculous. You know how paleontologists can get. All insulting each other, it's insane and intense. However, the theory that some dinosaurs were feathered began to gain in widespread support in the scientific community. It wasn't until 1997, however, that tangible evidence of feathered dinosaurs was first discovered. The remains of a dinosaur whose name I'm sure to mangle, the Sinosaur Opteryx, finally bore evidence of feathers, confirming the long-held suspicions of many scientists. In the 21 years since the discovery, other evidence has come to light indicating that feathered dinosaurs were actually common. Some scientists even speculate that the Tyrannosaurus rex, while mostly covered in scales, also had slight plumage along its back, after having shed a more feathery coat as a result of evolution. Pretty cool, but the scary T-Rex and its tiny arms may have also been covered in feathers as well. Number 5. Extinction was inevitable Some people believe that dinosaurs went extinct because they inherently failed in some way, but it simply isn't true. Dinosaurs existed for what scientists believe to be over 100 million years, and in a diverse array of conditions. Believe it or not, dinosaur fossils have been found on all seven continents, which indicates they were capable of surviving in all kinds of climates and temperatures. In fact, the extinction of the dinosaur probably had nothing to do with their biological capabilities. The most commonly held theory is that they met their fate 65 million years ago when an asteroid struck the Earth in what is now Mexico. The impact of the collision was so massive that it was 6 miles in length and created a crater 110 miles across. Fallout from the impact was so great that sunlight was completely blocked and then this caused complete darkness. The planet would be rendered uninhabitable by the asteroid, which led to abrupt climate change. 
The blast of intense heat caused by the crash was enough to vaporize rocks and spark massive wildfires, and due to the amount of carbon dioxide being released into the air, the global temperature increased by about 5 degrees Celsius, causing a 100,000 year long hot spell. Now, it's only fair to mention that some scientists believe that there are other contributing factors to the extinction of the dinosaurs, but that none of those explanations point toward the dinosaurs being biologically inept. Around the same time that this event happened, there was a significant increase in volcanic activity in India where magma spewed so rapidly that a one and a half mile thick accumulation went over 100 square miles. Magma generates from Earth's iridium rich core, meaning that the surge in eruptions would have increased the level of iridium in the Earth's atmosphere. Combined with the fallout caused by the meteor, the results would have been nothing short of catastrophic. Number 4. Dinosaurs had boring colors. A lot of people picture dinosaurs with boring brown and gray and green. After all, that's how they've been widely depicted over the years, whether in popular films like Jurassic Park or in respected academic materials like dry textbooks. But everything that we see in movies or learn in school, is it really true? Probably not. The truth is that many species of dinosaur likely had more vibrant shading than the drab, monotone hues that we're used to seeing. Research uncovered evidence that dinosaurs possessed melanin, a pigment found in human hair, bird feathers, and lizard scales. Dinosaurs existed in a variety of vibrant colors. These included black, white, ginger, and even iridescent sheen. Using a powerful microscope, scientists would analyze the melanin contents of primitive feathers belonging to a dinosaur whose name I can't pronounce and the turkey-sized flesh-eating dinosaur with sharp teeth and slender limbs. The results revealed evidence that it was orange and brown. In addition to their boldly pigmented hues, dinosaurs were also patterned with spots and stripes, which most likely acted as camouflage against predators and prey. Number 3. All dinosaurs were huge. The topic of dinosaurs often conjures up images of gargantuan creatures that would make today's biggest animals seem insignificantly small. However, not all dinosaurs were of epic proportion. For example, the horned Proceratops was the size of a sheep. The Velociraptor, which was about the same size as a golden retriever, would be depicted much larger in Jurassic Park and to make it more intimidating to viewers. It worked because those things were smart and scary in that movie. Some species were even smaller, such as a cat-sized raptor and an herbivorous dinosaur about the size of a rabbit. Oh, it's so cute. Some scientists have concluded that these smaller species were numerous and were actually in more numbers than the colossal giants that we first think of when it comes to dinosaurs. So why then do we tend to overlook these less formidable creatures? Well, for one, the skeletons of large dinosaurs are generally better preserved and easier to spot, and Hollywood is also to blame. Dinosaurs seem incredibly lifelike in modern movies, thanks to advanced graphic technology and the talents of designers and artists. So when these colossal beasts come to life on the big screen, it's easy to forget that their realistic appearance doesn't necessarily equate to accuracy. Number 2. Dinosaurs went completely extinct. Now, while scientists do believe that the massive extinction took place over 65 million years ago and eradicated the bulk of the dinosaur species, there were actually a few survivors. A handful of small feathered dinosaurs were fortunate enough to be spared. The result? Tens of thousands of modern day bird species, the direct descendants of the dozen or so avian survivors of the meteor crash. Today's birds descended mainly from small two-legged dinosaurs known as theropods. And included among the ancestors of the modern day bird is the Velociraptor. The predecessors of contemporary avian species possessed characteristics like large beaks and big teeth and small brains. They were also much larger than modern birds, weighing anywhere between 100 to 500 pounds on average. Dinosaurs began to adopt bird-like features long before the birds that we know today. In the 1990s, fossils with signs of plumage would be discovered in China, 
pointing toward the existence of an intermediary species between dinosaurs and birds. And number one, dinosaurs were cold-blooded. Now, it makes sense to assume that dinosaurs were cold-blooded reptiles based on the scaly images of them that pervade educational literature and pop culture, but contrary to popular belief, it simply wasn't possible for most of them to be cold-blooded. Dinosaurs underwent rapid changes, which required a well-regulated body temperature and a fast metabolism, something only mammals and birds typically possess. While the growth rate of the dinosaur led some experts to conclude that they were warm-blooded, others theorized that they were intermediate-blooded. To find out for sure, in 2014, scientists studied the bones of dinosaurs, which contained growth rings thought to be indicative of their growth speed just like the rings found in trees. At first, results fell nearly smack dab in the middle between cold and warm-blooded creatures, which led to the intermediate-blooded theory. Then, in a study authored by a scientist by the name of Michael Deamick, the bone samples were reanalyzed using different techniques, yielding dramatically different results. According to him, re-examination of the bones concluded that in terms of growth rate and metabolism, dinosaurs just kind of fit right in with other mammals. How do we know which study is correct? Well, Deamick pointed out that one major flaw in the research methods used in the original story was data between the dinosaur bones and warm-blooded animals compared in terms of daily growth rates, but the rings on the bones were more reflective of annual changes. Even today, the debate among scientists remains heated. John Grady, the lead researcher of the study, disputed by Deamick, maintains that he disagrees with the second study, citing the arguments as inconsistent and challenging the reliability of the latter study's research methods. Many experts support Deamick's findings that suggest dinosaurs were warm-blooded. However, the conflicting theories remain just that, theories. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new, and if you did, tell me what it was in the comments below. Also, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on World 5.